fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many in this can understand, uh, this the podcast to show you who I am, uh, Conrad Cushman, the legend in the plans, uh, please listen every day to the showcase, the opinions and knowledge that anyone can tell you, showing you how it is done, proving I am number one, what a legend becomes, this is now my time to show you that I am here, uh, this podcast just to make it loud and clear, uh, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many who's here can understand uh, everything pro wrestling, it can never be you, listen to the podcast here for the people, the best show that's here, so listen in, let the knowledge begin, the opinion and the lesson, yes. All right, folks, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I am your host, Conrad Cushman, and we are here with a review of AEW Dynamite, October 21st, 2020. We are going to be going down everything that happened in round one of this AEW World Title Elimination Tournament. Got some things to talk about here. Um, I can't wait to interact with you guys, hear what you thought of the show. We have to talk about stakes tonight as well. Lots of stakes on the show. Uh, very, very interesting show to say the least. I can't wait, like I said, to hear what you guys thought of the show. And with that being said, let's go to Montezzi with the intro. Uh. Folks, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. So glad you guys could join me on this wonderful Wednesday night. I'm flipping this to the back for this episode. We're rocking a Timberwolves hat. Show my boys, the Minnesota Timberwolves, some love. Um, we're going to talk AEW Dynamite. And with that said, I have to, have to make sure that I go in here and say what's up to the live chat. The people who join me live every week. The very first person in here was my girl, Jocelyn. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Also, big shout out to Chris DeZuba. My man Ace in the house. What's going on, Ace? One of the mods here. My man Rockstar is also here. Another mod, Jesus DeLeon. What is going on, guys? What is going on? Thank you so much for being up in here and talking a little pro wrestling with me, man. Helps things definitely just move along. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And if I haven't said it lately, you guys are just as important. Uh, I wouldn't even say important. You guys are a huge part of the show, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's talk AEW Dynamite, shall we? Got lots of wrestling this week coming up, so this is going to be a, uh, a dandy one, to say the least. Um, Dynamite. Dynamite tonight. Lots of build towards Full Gear. Uh, Full Gear is the next pay-per-view happening on November 7th, 2020. Uh... This show was centered around getting that card structure set up for full gear. And I thought tonight AEW did a good job with lots of build as to here's where we are. Here's where we're going. And I think they did a good job, too, of putting little trinkets in there for people to get something to grab onto. Because some things seem like, is this forgotten about? But then they reminded you tonight, like, hey, no, we still know about this. Things are still happening. Give us time. What's good, Rob? What's happening, brother? I know that you're out there on the road, so I appreciate you being in here with us. All right. Let us get into this, though. Uh, tonight, the commentary team, Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, and Excalibur are the commentary team. Um, I thought everyone did a good job tonight. Really well done. Um, nothing out of this world, but the excitement was there for the most part. Uh, yeah, good good commentary tonight from everybody. Round one of the tournament, 
AEW World Title Eliminator Tournament. We had Wardlow versus Jungle Boy to kick off the show. Uh, two guys who I could definitely see AEW ready to build around. And Jungle Boy comes out with Marco Stunt and Luchasaurus in his corner. Um, really dope, man. Really dope. Wardlow comes out by himself because MJF has a stake. A steak dinner with Le Champion tonight. So he can't be there. He can't bother to be there for Wardlow's match. But this opening contest was definitely something fun, in my opinion. Um, we saw Jungle Boy attempt a lot of moves that he normally would hit. But Wardlow, they put over how powerful he was tonight. Um, I will say this, too, about a lot of the matches tonight. Simple storytelling for a lot of them. Hey, what's going on? What's up, Mom? See? Even Mom Dukes is in the chat. Appreciate it. Hit that like button for her, brother. Hit that like button. Hit it. Boom. Give you guys a little reminder there. But, yes, this was so well done. They had everything in this match that you could have wanted. Jungle Boy was the baby face. Wardlow was the heel. Wardlow, the big, strong, nasty, mean heel going up against Jungle Boy. He went for so many Huracaranas tonight, and they were blocked at all attempts. At one point, he got powerbombed into a ring post on the outside, metal ring post into Jungle Boy's back. He was taken down for that one. Um, ooh, harsh, man. Uh, Jungle Boy took a lot of abuse early on in this match. Uh, things didn't really turn around until Jungle Boy got to hit his second rope where he's on the outside, flip over, jump into that Tornado DDT. He lands it on Wardlow. I love that move. Anytime I see that done, very, very impressed. The balance it takes to do that, too good, too good. And uh, Jungle Boy, uh, just a phenom. This kid had it all. He did a great job selling in this one. Um, at one point, they teased Wardlow doing a press slam. I don't know if he was going to go for the old Dean Malenko move, if you guys have never seen it. The press slam where he drops you down onto his knee from the second rope or the top rope. Uh, that is a beast move, and I thought they were going to do that for a second with him. But instead, Jungle Boy gets out of it and reverses it into the Huracarana he's been trying to hit all match. That is your babyface hopeful spot. Wardlow gets out of this, though. And eventually, he hits an F10 on the outside of the ring, launching him into the ring. And then he hits Jungle Boy with another F10. One, two, three. That's it. That's all she wrote for Jungle Boy tonight. And he takes the loss in the first match in the tournament to Wardlow. But Wardlow looked like a beast. That was the key thing, in my opinion. Uh, he really had to get this treatment because I don't think enough focus has been on Wardlow. And I think Jungle Boy is going to be fine in the long run from this. Jungle Boy is a long-term project. I think Wardlow is somebody that they're trying to build up right away. Um, they've teased dissension with him and MJF. So this is something that we could see built up very easy. Uh, what's going on, Malik Murray? Malik Murray says, I got a question. Top five wrestlers that need to go to AEW... And do you think AEW should make another Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas? Malik, save that question for me at the end, brother, and I'll definitely answer that because that's going to take up a little bit of time. So remind me about that one if that's your question of the night. Um, after this, we get a little bit of a preview of La Dinner Debonair with MJF and Chris Jericho. More on that later, as you guys can see. I hope you guys like the title of it tonight. Steak and a Tournament. Hopefully nobody had filthy thoughts because it is Wednesday, uh, but this really worked, and I thought the promotion for this was great, so they really harped on this all night about the Le Debonair, uh, the Le Dinner Debonair, excuse me, with MJF and Jericho. They started building it off right from the beginning of the night, and then they showed Eddie Kingston's off-air promo last week. Now, I saw somebody who recorded this on Twitter, and I thought Eddie Kingston was money. Uh, he went in there, he called John Moxley a son of a bitch multiple times, and he was really teasing the fact that he never gave up in his match against him, and he really talked about him going to the land of sports entertainers and forgetting everybody. Uh, I like the language that was used in this. Eddie Kingston is money on the mic, and I think the same thing for Moxley tonight. Um... And we then find out that at full gear, it's going to be John Moxley versus Eddie Kingston for the AEW championship in an I quit match. This one is probably going to get wild. Um, 
Last year, him and Kenny Omega had a, a brawl, and I think we're going to get the same thing here with Kingston and Moxley. Uh, love to hear what you guys think about this. Uh, Jesus De Leon says, Jungle Boy will get his chance next year, I hope. Uh, good match between these two. I'm with it, Jesus. Uh, good stuff here. Um, Rob responded to Malik saying, AEW needs to focus on the talent they already have, in my opinion. Good point, Rob. Uh, Jocelyn says Jungle Boy has time to has time to uh, spotlight in the company. Uh, he did good. I, I'm with you on that, Jocelyn. Eddie and Moxley's promos were fired tonight. Yo, hey Zeus, big facts on that one, bro. Like there was nothing, nothing that was gonna get in the way of those promos tonight. They did an excellent job. Like if you had to pick the two things that would have helped them shine the most, they did it tonight. It was magic. It was wonderful. Um, facts. He makes you believe the beef is real. I like that about Eddie Kingston too. Um, uh, Malik Murray is asking about Darby and Cody in a two out of three falls match for the TNT championship. That might not be a bad stipulation, Malik. Not a bad stipulation. Uh, blood. Yes. I, I Jocelyn, I think we're going to see more than blood. I think that match is going to get hardcore. Um, a said Moxley never quits. Good luck. Kingston. We'll see. We'll see. Crazier things have happened. Um, but we cut backstage then to a John Moxley promo. Moxley's promo was money. He brought up the fact that he was happy for his friend Eddie Kingston when he first signed to AEW. And if you guys remember, when Cody had the open challenge, John Moxley was very excited about the person challenging him for it. I'm surprised they didn't make reference to the tweet. I thought it could have been something cool if they would have did that. Um... I, I really think they could have done something with that that tweet, but it's a minor detail. But he said he was happy for Eddie Kingston, but then Eddie turned into a whiner, a complainer. The one thing Moxley doesn't like, and technically he is whining and complaining a little bit. But if Moxley didn't make those promises, Eddie has a point. Good thing about a, a heel. The best heels always have some truth into what they're saying. Um... And then afterwards, Moxley just basically says he's ready for full gear. He said that he's choked him out before and he's going to do it again. So, like I said, the hype for this one is real. I'm not doing this promo any justice. If you guys want to go out of your way to see it, just check it out. I'm not saying it's going to knock your socks off, but I thought it was very well done. Uh, what is going on, Shabazz? Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you being up in here as well. Next up. We have another round one tournament matchup. Joey Janela was supposed to be in this match, but due to, to due to his exposure to, uh, we're just going to say COVID for this, he had to pull out of this match. And Joey Janela could not be in it. Uh, I don't know if this happened at the wrestling matches at the GCW show. I don't know when he was exposed, but another wrestler had the COVID and they had to just pull out of this. So Sonny Kiss will be taking his place in this. Sonny Kiss is his tag team partner, the Concrete Rose. Perfect person to step in. But they are taking on Kenny Omega. Now, Sonny Kiss comes out, makes his entrance like he usually does. But Kenny Omega's entrance, I don't know if you guys know about this, but in my opinion, Kenny Omega's entrance reminded me very heavily of a uh, Bob Sapp. <laughs> and I know some of you guys are like, yeah, I'm not trying to hear that. But Bob Sapp from uh, New Japan, if you guys ever go back and look at it, he had the girls out there. They were dancing. The girls had the brooms. We're going back to the cleaner gimmick. Kenny Omega really had this long intro. And slowly but surely, I was getting pissed. It was kind of like Cody's entrance where you're like, dude, what is up with all the, the pomp and circumstance for this? And Kenny's music finally hits and he comes out and he is focused. Um, honestly, I can give you the play-by-play -play for the match. Kenny Omega shakes Sonny Kiss's hands. The bell rings. There is a V-trigger to the face. Picked up. One winged angel. One, two, three. That's it. GG. Good night. That's all she wrote for Sunny Kiss as well. Um, they booked this perfectly. Kenny Omega needed to be put over like a star here. And Kenny Omega looked like this was light work. And everything that he's been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks looks like it's true in this moment here. 
And I like what they did here. Uh, they had Kenny acting babyface after the match, you know, helping Sonny kiss to his feet. Uh, there was a little bit of a, like, embrace after, like, you're going to be all right. You got this in the future. And Sonny Kiss looked very disappointed. But Kenny Omega came off like such a doucher here a little bit, too. And I think that has to be on purpose uh, with Kenny Omega. Um, I would be very interested to see what the chat is saying about a lot of this. Uh, let me get into this with you guys. Um, let's see here. A said the cleaner showed up. Big facts. B boy skyline. What's good, Jordan? Uh, he said Kenny is the cleaner. Heartbreak kid. Rockstar said squash. Uh, Malik Murray says that uh, he's got a question. Do you think the Lucha Bro should break up and become singles guys? No, but I think you always have that option to make them single guy singles guys. If that's fair to say. Uh. Jocelyn said the cleaner showed up. A lot of people seem to be happy with the cleaner just being there. Uh, it was a big, big deal, man. I really, really like Kenny Omega showing back up. Hey, Zeus said, I like the cleaner being back. Uh, I'm hoping at least to a Sunny Kenny feud. I don't know if we're going to get that with uh, Sunny. I feel like Sunny Kiss was just disappointed. And I think Sunny Kiss was someone who wanted to be on the show. Got some uh, TV time. Can't be mad at it. Um, and I, I don't think this hurt Sonny Kiss in the long run. Sonny Kiss was doing uh, what he had to do anyway from this point forward. So it's what it is when it comes down to that. And I know someone did not just ask me, am I playing the PlayStation? <laughs> um, yeah. So let me see here. AEW needs to focus on the talent they have already, Rob says. Uh, Omega equals bleach, brooms, and mops. <laughs> Shabazz, I like it. I like it. Kenny did his thing here, though. No one is blaming uh, the cleaner at all for what he had to do. And, guys, when we talk about the cleaner, there is only one thing that we have to talk about. And that is getting ready to make those moves and clean yourself up with Manscaped. You guys can go to manscaped.com and use our promo code EPW Show. You guys can save yourselves 20% and get free delivery. This has everything you need for manscaped.com. They have the lawnmower 3.0. This thing is designed for growing grooming, guys. You can use it, and ladies, you can use it as well. It cleans up nice, it makes you look good, and you guys can buy all the smell goods from the ball deodorant to the foot deodorant, cologne. They have it all. They even have boxers on there. Boxers. Uh, they have nice leather bags for carrying if you're traveling. I think grooming is very, very important. So you guys need to definitely use this promo code. Holidays are getting ready to come up. They're going to be here before you know it. So make sure you guys get this stuff now. So promo code EPW Show manscaped.com 20% free delivery definitely definitely tell your fam to check it out pass it along to whoever needs it um i think you guys will appreciate it very much so definitely dope to me so uh thank you i see queen of the indies is in the chat what is going on tiff what is going on and i have to show some love to our other sponsors real quick as well Make sure you guys go to powerslam.tv. Check out the wrestling network that has you covered for all the independent wrestling going on. You guys can use the same promo code EPW Show. Get one month free of independent wrestling on your boys, everything pro wrestling. So make sure you tell them that we sent you there and enjoy some free wrestling on us. Uh, also, big shout out to the pro wrestling shoot. My man Jesse in the house. He always drops a podcast every single week for you guys. So make sure you guys check Jesse out and check out my boys. Everything college basketball. These guys are getting ready for the season that is coming up and they have all the news for you guys. So make sure you check them out as well. But we got to get back to dynamite guys. Um, next, Tony Schiavone, they show him in a backstage interview here with everyone's favorite, your man's, Orange Cassidy, and he's back there still with the nonchalant attitude, nothing changes about your boy Orange Cassidy, he is backstage kind of just like, oh, whatever, 
wherever. You know how Justin Roberts says it every single week for him. He is very nonchalant about the match with Cody. Um, they're asking him if he's if he's prepared. He's kind of like, yeah, in Cincinnati next week. And they're like, we're in Jacksonville still. He's like, oh, I don't care, whatever. I'm going to be there. So it looks like Orange Cassidy is ready the way he always is, however he's going to do it. And then we cut to uh, Dasha, who is going to interview Cody, who's in the car with his coach, Double A of the Horsemen, Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson is out there, and he is showing up to let people know that Cody is ready. And Double A was really hyped, and he brings up the fact that Cody Rhodes gained 14 pounds, and Cody looks like he is all muscle. So Cody's like, yeah, I'm actually getting ready to build my body up to be in the heavyweight division. I like it. It brought a real sports aspect to his TNT title match coming up. And I think Cody's really good on these promos. Um, They show him taking out all of his stuff out of the car. And Cody is just talking about how there's whispers of a stipulation being added to the match. He doesn't know what it is yet, but there are whispers of something happening with this match. And he is focused on it. And Cody says he's ready for Orange Cassidy. I like it. He is focused. I'll be very interested to see what they do with this match. Because I thought it was weird that you put Orange Cassidy in this match. And you seem like you're trying to build him up. But at the same time, you're trying to build Cody up. Um, We're going to see what happens in that uh, match next week. And there's going to be more on that in a little bit here. Uh, Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston uh, comes out for, or he's, I'm sorry, he's backstage, excuse me. Uh, He puts over Phoenix and Pentagon saying one of them's going to win the AEW World Title Tournament. The Butcher and the Blade are going to win the tag titles. And he says, you see what I did there? That's something Moxley never did for his friends. I don't forget about people. I'm still with my people. And I really like that Eddie brought that back up once again. Um, Like I said, this dude is money on the mic. Money. And during all of this, uh, he talks about Mox will be begging his old company to take him back after he quits in their match at Full Gear. Um, You guys know how badly Moxley said in those first uh, interviews that he did not like being in WWE. Honestly, he sounded miserable. And for Kingston to put that in the promo, golf clap. That was good. Respect, Kingston. Um, and then he just says that he likes this new dark place that he's in because Moxley said he lost his way and he doesn't really recognize him. And he says that he lives in this new dark place. And I thought that was a hell. Eddie Kingston was on fire tonight. I'm telling you. And they really showcased him a lot in this episode. Um, let's see here. Uh, queen of the Indies throwing up a smile. Just walked the dog. Shout out to Duffy. Uh, Malik says, do you think they should have a triple threat match for the TNT championship? I don't think so. I prefer one-on-one contests. I think AEW's done a really good job actually staying away from triple threat matches right now. Uh, Sean Harrington says, tonight's show was good. Um, (laughs) Even Britt Baker looked good tonight. I'm surprised they actually had uh, a winner in the Lucha Bros match. I expected a draw or interference or Archer coming out for a no contest. And this, this is true. Um, and Sean is speculating on one of the matches that we will get to. He's, he thinks that Orange Cassie will be facing Brody Lee at full gear or a returning pack. That would be dope. That would be dope. Um, cool. So in all of this, we have uh, everything getting set up. And we're moving on to this tournament matchup here because... Four matches, singles matches tonight. They had to get a lot of stuff squeezed in. And I thought they did a good job managing their time tonight. Another round one matchup. This one is Ray Phoenix versus Pentagon Jr. And I saw somebody say match of the night. Um, I think this was match of the night for me as well. Uh, I love, love, love Lucha Underground. If you guys have never heard me talk about it, super dope. I think I have some past Lucha Underground reviews in the archive somewhere. I think I did at least one. I think. If not, I meant to. Because Lucha Underground was my show. But I had a different job at the time. Where you had to wake up like crazy hours. Uh, in the middle of the night. But this one was fun. Um, let me see here. 
Uh, oh, Sean said might be one of the best time shows. I still think Sue throwing up the bird might be one of the uh, best endings. But yes, I can agree with that for sure. Um, Ray Phoenix Pentagon. All I wanted to see in this match was them just let them wrestle. Give this time. Let these guys do what they're going to do. That's it. Very simple. If you have never seen these two in Lucha Underground, you are missing out. I didn't even know they were brothers when they were in Lucha Underground. Um, I just thought they were just two great wrestlers from there. But they did a hell of a job on that show. Eddie Kingston comes out now in between both their entrances. He says he's going to be on commentary for this. He's probably out there to keep the peace between them and kind of, you know, talk up his match with Moxley, which he does the entire time on commentary, also putting over Phoenix and Pentagon at the same time. Uh, early on in this match, they had some great exchanges back and forth of wrestling holds. Uh, the quick Lucha Libre style is what matters the most when it comes down to this. And I'm telling you guys right now, the chops. Is Phoenix gave Pentagon a, one a vicious chop in the very beginning. But if you guys know Pentagon, when he took the glove off, he chopped the shit out of Ray Phoenix. I don't care what anybody says. That was a hell of a chop. Uh, he even chopped his hand on the outside during the picture in picture, uh, right against the ring post. They were just lighting each other up. But when they have that chemistry, when you are in there with someone who is your brother, your best friend, I feel like you know that you guys can be stiff in the ring and really go at it with each other. And that's what these two did here, man. The great exchanges just made me miss Lucha Underground even more. Um, really fun here. At one point, they were on the top rope, and we saw uh, a great Spanish fly hit out of the positioning where Phoenix was. He does like a jump over, a flip, double hop up, gets grabbed, and then does a flip out of it into a Spanish fly. Dude, Phoenix is the shit. I don't care what anybody says. To me, when we're talking about who's the next Rey Mysterio, this man has to be in the conversation. And I know he shouldn't be the next Rey Mysterio. He should be the first Phoenix. But people compare like the greatest luchadors with Rey Mysterio. Phoenix's name needs to come up in that category. When Phoenix is on, this dude is money. And he's on more often than not. And he hits the Spanish fly. He doesn't get the victory from it. Uh, at one point, Pentagon does the classic arm break, the move that he used to use to break people's arms in Lucha Underground. Uh, he hits it on Phoenix, not all the way like he used to. He kind of gets part of it, and Phoenix is holding his arm. He shows a moment of sorrow and pity, goes for a package pile driver reverse. Phoenix gets shot off the ropes. He goes into a crucifix, but lands on his feet in a pile driver position with Pentagon, and he hits the destroyer one two three my man pd williams can celebrate tonight because the destroyer was used as a finisher ray phoenix gets the victory over pentagon match of the night i thought this one was so much fun with the amount of time that they had in this one um if you didn't call this match of the night you need to get your eyes checked jocelyn said uh lucha underground rules it'd be cool if you did a classic review of lucha underground i'd watch that thank you sean i may put that uh down as one of the classic reviews coming up uh, the Lucha Bros stole the show like they always do the best. Uh, Sean Harrington said, I did feel scared for Phoenix after that bump. He held it down. Uh, hey, what's going on, Damon Fitzgerald? Got to show my cousin some love. I appreciate you. <laughs> uh, Eddie on commentary only added to the match. He did good. Uh, never seen Phoenix. Yeah, he's dope. I'm telling you. Uh, TNT, man, Damon. Every, um, what is it, Wednesday night, TNT, 8 p.m., New wrestling company, AEW All Elite Wrestling, owned by uh, Tony Khan. His father owns the Jacksonville Jaguars. You should definitely check it out. Uh, let's see here. Shabazz said, Sean Harrington, true. I'm loving it, guys. Uh, everyone seems like they really enjoyed this matchup. I'm with it. Like, I thought match of the night crushed it. You can't go wrong with Luchador's wrestling, and especially my peeps from Lucha Underground. Now... We get a segment that got a lot of criticism from last week that I really didn't judge too much. We had uh, the segment here with the best friends in their match. Uh, we all remember Trent went headfirst into an arcade system that Kip Sabian was playing. Miro ended up coming out and destroying the best friends because he said, you break my shit, game over. And he ended up uh, beating them down for this. And I think a lot of people are like, oh, this is stupid. They're feuding over a video game. 
I will not argue the fact that maybe it was foolish to have Kit playing during a match. I get it. Completely get it. But video gamers rage. And I think that was what this was kind of supposed to be about. And I think anyone who plays video games or who has as a child or for a long time, they know people will get upset about these things. And I think that was what was supposed to be uh, shown with Rusev. Like, oh, you broke my game? It's on. We're about to fight. That's how I uh, interpreted it. And some people, maybe they didn't like it. Maybe they did. But um, definitely very appreciative of what they did here. Um, They just hyped up this match a little bit. And hopefully more people understood it that week. Maybe you guys felt differently in the chat. I don't know. Um, definitely. And I, I gotta re, I gotta go back a little bit here for six. Six said, uh, made them both look strong. Phoenix won, but gave you that feeling that he only won because his brother felt remorse. Love it. Classic, classic story from any like karate movie, anything in the movies where there's two people who are brothers and they're battling it out. Good point, sick. Um, Malik Murray, I got a question. Do you think Sean Spears should be TNT championship? Uh, holder, not right now, maybe later on, if you can find something intriguing for him to do, but at this moment, I would say no, uh, and should Keith Lee go to AEW, no, I think Keith's in a good spot in WWE, they just need to fix some things about him right now, uh, let's see here, thank you, Damon, for the love and support, everything pro wrestling, I know C appreciates you, that's what's up, thank you, uh, Schmozy, what's going on, thank you for joining us, I see you throwing up the, the two sweets, I appreciate it, I appreciate it, you guys are always more than welcome to uh, come on in, show some love. Thank you, thank you. Uh, appreciate the subscribe. Hope you guys like the Orange Cassidy in the background there. Um, I got no problem with the feud. I only thought the arc- arcade game looked way too fake. Yeah, the cardboard did look bad, Sean. Uh, Spears could be a great TNT champion someday, just no time soon. Maybe late 2021. Yeah, they got some building up to do. Miro is done playing nice with the best friends. Uh, six, I know a few guys who have thrown their controllers at their flat screens for losing at fight night. <laughs> we need a good boxing game, sick. Uh, I saw the one you had put in our chat the other day. Definitely can't wait for that boxing game, man. It's been a long time since we've had one. Uh, we go to a backstage segment here, though. And we had Colt Cabana with John Silver, Alex Reynolds here. And in my opinion, in this promo segment, Colt Cabana did his job to be very basic. No funniness from Colt because he wants to win the AEW championship. And I like that he took it serious. He knew he was like, no, I'm here to win the AEW championship. Uh, He knows that his career is on the closer end of being over than him continuing to wrestle. Like it. And with Silver and Reynolds, John Silver really took over. And I think they gave him a shot because of his work on being the elite. John Silver has been one of the best parts of being the elite. And I think Reynolds is starting to shine too on it. But the whole Johnny Hungy and him just acting a fool and talking about milk and stuff. John Silver has been hilarious. So Silver really shined here. And Colt let him get a lot of the mic time. And he said, I don't even like you. And you're going to become AEW champion. Mr. Brody Lee is going to get back the TNT title. We're going to become number one contenders and win those tag titles. Yeah. And he starts flexing. I thought it worked for him. Uh, I think he he made the most. He, he did what JR calls maximizing your minutes. He had a little bit of time, put himself over, got his partner over, and still helped the Dark Order at the same time. Silver did it right here in this one. Um, let's see here. Sean Harrington responds back about Keith Lee. Uh, he said he was in a better spot in NXT. Raw has no idea what to do with Keith Lee. They micromanage him too much and his win percentage is awful. Uh, Shabazz said, but WWE messed up Keith Lee already booked themselves into a corner. Uh, let's see here. Colt still needs to work on his mistakes. I assume you're referring with the dark order. They have been watching Colt very closely when it comes to this. Uh, let's see. Cole Cabana is underrated though. Uh, I thought he and Hangman, uh, killed it tonight. If, uh, the Lucha Bros weren't on this show, that match would have stole it. Uh, for a match that was predictable, it still had me pumped throughout. And we're going to get into that one next. Round one, Cole Cabana with Evil Uno watching and, uh, he watched from the ramp basically, not even in his corner versus Adam Hangman Page. Uh, I love the chance of cowboy stuff. If anybody heard that, freaking hilarious in this, man. Um, 
for sure definitely funny uh cowboy stuff tony khan has been encouraging people not to swear on the air i think they only have so many swears and they're trying to save that for the wrestlers so not mad at it at all um let's see here uh shabazz says but the dark order looks like everything but dark they need to go back to the cult roots and maybe they will once uh, this thing's died down. I really think uh, they got hurt by the whole uh, no show for the week. And then they were just, they've been on this track ever since then. Uh, Silver and Reynolds, I thought, really impressed in the four-way as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with that, Sean. So, Cole Cabana uh, starts off showing he's the vet, rolling out of moves from wrist locks. He's doing a bunch of rolls and then getting out of it, getting out of headlocks. I'm the vet. I know more about this than you. And Paige looks frustrated. Hits him with some hard strikes in this one. And then we get a little bit of an exchange of roll-ups here between the two of them. Uh, this match was really good. And eventually Paige knocks Colt down to the floor. He goes for his signature moonsault to the floor. But pa uh, Colt, excuse me, cuts Paige off. Shoves him off the top rope onto the apron. Tough, tough back bump for Paige there. Um, he is down and then we see Colt dive off of the apron onto him with a big splash and eventually he goes for a big splash into the ring after he rolls him in, but Colt comes up short this time and afterwards he goes for the buckshot lariat. Colt comes in and blocks it. He goes for the buckshot lariat again. Colt ducks it this time. Colt was very prepared for him because he is the widely veteran and he knew what he wanted to do in this match. So, once again, the match finish is happening. Eventually, Paige flies over the top rope. And Colt knows once again that the buckshot lariat is coming. But this time, he does a pump fake. Colt Cabana bit on the pump fake. Never bite on the pump fake, boys. And he caught him right after that. After he ducked and he raised his head up, all he saw was the clothesline coming in. And one, two, three. They really did a good job putting this match together. There was one hope spot for Colt. Where he hit his Superman pen, Paige got out of it. But once that buckshot lariat got hit, you knew it was lights out for uh, Colt Cabana. One, two, three. The Dark Order comes out to try to pick up the pieces of Colt Cabana. Uh, they seemed upset a little bit, but he did his best against the Hangman. Uh, good victory here. Uh, I think a predictable outcome, but like I said, predictable is not always bad. I think Sean said it in the chat as well. This was dope. Uh, Sean said... Dark uh, in the Dark Order represents where those people were before joining the group. Mm, this is true. I like it. That's a good point. That's a good point. We have uh, so many things here. Uh, the, the setup then now, it looks like we're going to have Omega versus Phoenix next week, Wardlow versus Paige. So we know what round two of the tournament's looking like. We also get a, a promo after this match. Sammy Guevara. Now, I feel like they're doing some weird things with him because at one moment, Sammy Guevara is in a 5XL jacket that MJF got him, and then he's like this creepy dude who wants to feud with Matt Hardy. He's jumping from two different types of personalities. Maybe he's just trying to show his range, but he cuts a promo on Matt and basically says that he's not through with Matt Hardy yet. If you guys remember the match from All Out, uh, he almost, like, destroyed Matt Hardy. Uh, we can't have moments like that again. So this match, this feud has been great, but at the same time, it's been nothing but a disaster for both of their careers. Like, these dudes cannot get hurt while doing this stuff. So I hope they take extreme caution going forward with this feud and be smart about what they're going to do. But it looks like these two are having a match coming up, and it teased the date of full gear more on that once again in a second. Uh, let's see here. We have another promo. Team Taz comes out. So that's Taz. Your boy, uh, Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. Absolute Ricky Starks. Uh, they come out and Taz is still on and about Will Hobbs joining them. Uh, Taz wants Will Hobbs in the group. And... Like I said, bro, could you imagine Will Hobbs teaming up with Brian and Cage? Uh, I'm getting flashbacks to Fire and Ice, and when Casey listens to this, he's going to be mad, but that would be uh, really cool if they had the chance to um, put them together as a team, but I don't think Will Hobbs should join them. I think Will Hobbs has a big singles career in front of him. 
the dude's got presence. So I think we're going to see this feud continue between him and Cage. Um, now, Taz said that he got called into an office by Tony Khan, and he just said, hey, Taz, I wanted to let you know the reason Darby Allen's getting this TNT title shot was because of the match with Ricky Starks. If Ricky Starks would have won that match, he would have been the one getting the shot. And Taz comes off as he's pissed off. He said, yeah, that would have been nice. Darby Allen gets everything handed to him. Taz is whining, complaining. Uh, just he, he comes off like a badass, actually, in this. He did a great job speaking for his team. And Ricky Starks then gets on the microphone and says that he threatens to end uh, Darby Allen the next time they're in the ring together, the next time they meet. And he just called him like, uh, I think he said, he called him a bitch or something. Talking about his half face pain on his face. Ricky Starks crushed it, man. This dude needs the microphone in his hand. They gave Cage enough time to talk to get his point across. Taz was the reassurance, the backup for everything. And then Ricky Starks shined. Um, Ricky Starks needs to pick up some big victories soon, though, too. Um, I don't know if him and Darby are going to fight before the pay-per-view. I don't know if that's what that was alluding to, but interesting. Interesting stuff that we had here from them. Um, and next, we got to talk about something that has really, really had my interest all night that I've been waiting for us to uh, talk about. Two of my favorite things, a little pro wrestling and a little bit of steak. Le Dinner Debonair. Now, this was built up from last week. Chris Jericho and MJF said they were going to go one-on-one for a steak dinner because MJF would like to join Chris Jericho's group, The Inner Circle. Now, for a long time, uh, we have all wondered... Is MJF really trying to join the inner circle or is there some other motive or something else going on here? And nothing was really given in this. So we see these two first come out. Uh, They are served by their waitress, Thelma, uh, that MJF kept calling her. And Jericho said it's Velma with a V. And that's where the little bit of a battle started between these two. They are ordering their steaks, and MJF orders his well done at first. And then Chris Jericho, they go down the line of, oh, it's I want mine medium well, and I want mine rare. And then it gets to, I want mine blue, which is basically raw ass steak, which is just, ugh, I don't know if I could do that, man. Um, raw steak, and these two are just ready to to go at it with each other. And during all of this, she takes the order and she walks away and they kind of get into it with each other. And they're like, what are we doing here? All right. And during all of this, they they finally find common ground and they're like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And the punchline was Orange Cassidy and they both laugh. And then MJF tries to get them back on pace with this smooth talking saying, oh, well, listen, Chris, here's what we're here to do. Uh, I really want to be in the inner circle. It's basically all leading up to this. And then Jericho reveals that next week there's going to be an inner circle town hall to address MJF joining the inner circle. And eventually the stakes get brought out. They're both not cooked at all. Probably they probably had like 10 seconds a piece on the grill and they brought them out to them to serve them these raw ass steaks. <laughs> and during all of this, these two start getting into like a Broadway comedy singing. And I don't know if it was Frank Sinatra, the Rat Pack. These guys go into full Broadway mode. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but your boy MJF, if you guys go on to the different uh, search avenues, i seen it on YouTube. MJF can actually sing. I don't know if you guys know this, but he was in a lot of theater programs and stuff as he was uh, in high school. And then he eventually got into pro wrestling. MJF, the man can sing. Him and Jericho sing a duet. Um, And they break this into full comedy mode to where they get up, they start singing, they're dancing, there's girls around them kicking the legs out looking like showgirls. Um, I thought this really worked. They had background singing from the two of them. Comedy moment of the night. And I saw a couple people on Twitter. Oh, this isn't wrestling. What is this segment? This 110% is pro wrestling. 
this is what pro wrestling is about. Um, the way they brought all of this up, dude, very well done. I was laughing the entire time watching this. Uh, these two crushed it, in my opinion. That is how you do one of these segments. Chris Jericho is not known for singing Broadway. He's a, a rock star, basically, where you don't have to have the greatest voice. You just have to have your message come across to the people. And MJF, like I said, after this is over, I want you guys to just Google MJF singing. I think he's singing to Penelope Ford, if I'm not mistaken. The dude can sing. I'm not even trying to front. Like, he, he knows how to sing. And you can check him out on Rosie O'Donnell. That's right, Max. All love for you, buddy. Uh, you can check him out on Rosie O'Donnell, and he can do the same thing. Um, let me see here what we've got coming up. We got some people in the chat. Uh, Rob said Cage is awful on the mic. Uh, Darby Burns take butt, <laughs> takes butt. Uh, somebody needs to give him a script. I don't know uh, where you're going with that. Uh, let's see here. Sean Harrington. I don't think it's said enough. AEW has the best mouthpieces in wrestling right now. I am with you on that, Sean. They have Taz, Jake, the snake Roberts. Uh, we haven't seen too much of Vicky Guerrero, but they got Vicky too. They got a lot of good people who can talk on the microphone and that doesn't even include Ricky Starks, Chris Jericho, John Moxley, Eddie Kingston. Good point, Sean. You, you just sold me on it completely. Um, and oh, Jossa corrected it and said Taz from before. Uh, no more singing Jericho and MJF <laughs> ace put, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we said, uh, blue and I was like, he's going to get worms in his butt. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, the dinner was out there. No one could have predicted that is what would go down. I'm still on the fence as where I am on the segment overall. It was entertaining and unexpected. I, I thought it was great, Sean. I think that's what wrestling's about sometimes with those segments like that. Um, a set raw steak. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, Jocelyn said nobody cares about him. Uh, he said blue. I thought Jericho said moo as in he wanted it so rare that a cow would still be mooing. <laughs> uh, the segment was definitely a callback to the old Dean Martin variety shows. MJF was a beast, uh, at tap dancing too. laugh out loud. Rosie O'Donnell still has a show. Uh, no, sick. Back in the day when Rosie O'Donnell did have a show, as a child, MJF was on there, I think when he was five, to get tickets to a wrestling show. I think it was WWE at the time. So MJF's been a real wrestling fan for a long time, but he was singing a lot of, like, opera stuff. And you, you'll see. If you go on there, I think he sings uh, You Are My Sunshine or something like that um, as a kid. And... You know, I had to bring that up because he definitely tried to dog one of my independent wrestling show reviews. And then that came out and I had to remind him about it. Um, let's see here. Hey, Zeus says, I hope we get another cage and Will Hobbs. And we need Starks to uh, find a few with somebody new. Uh, let us see here. <laughs> uh bullet club should bullet club come out bullet club is in new japan good sir and the g1 i'm not even ready for that conversation that tournament was fire pure fire uh what is going on aaron in the chat good to see you in here brother uh how do y'all like steaks the rawest i'll go is medium rare uh i'm with you sick medium rare is probably the worst i'll do <laughs> uh but i do think a good steak never needs any sauce on it though some people always feel like, oh, I got to put barbecue sauce or ketchup or something. A good steak never needs it, man. Uh, sometimes the right butter on it, too, really helps. Uh, Sean said, even as a kid, he said he wanted to be a wrestler on The Rosie Show, so I applaud him for making his dream come true. Big facts. Um, next up, we have Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, um, taking on Killin, uh, excuse me, Kylan King. Uh, you've seen Kylan on AEW Dark several times. Uh, she's done a good job on there. And I thought in this match with Britt, well done. Britt Baker looks way more seasoned. I don't know what it is. Maybe she's been working at it a little bit harder. But Britt Baker crushed it in this one. Honestly, a lot of offense for her. She hits a fisherman neckbreaker, hits the curb stomp, and then gets the pink glove. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Puts on the pink glove and puts in the lock jaw, the rings of Saturn with the mandible claw. She has nowhere to go. King has to tap out to this. Um, Britt Baker looks strong again with Rebel or Reba, whatever you would like to call her, in her corner. I liked it. Um, Britt Baker has shown improvement, and I'm very interested to see uh, if she will be the one to go up against Sheeta eventually. 
because uh, I think Nyla Rose might be next in line, but it's got to be Britt Baker or uh, Nyla Rose to go up against Sheeta. Um, <laughs> let me see here. Uh, Sean Herring, did anyone watch Impact or Talk a Shot last night? Talk a Shot was so funny in the gimmicks. I did watch uh, both, actually, Sean. Uh, in a rare time that I actually watched Impact, uh, I definitely caught it. And Talk a Shot was pretty good, too, from uh, what I saw in there. Great cameos. Uh, if you eat a steak well done, you are not to be trusted. <laughs> Terrible, Rob. I thought this woman's match was pretty good. I wonder if they will sign her. Uh, I could see it happening, Jesus. She's been pretty good on AW Dark. MJF was a security guard back in NXT, if y'all didn't know. Yes, with Samoa Joe, where Joe definitely pushed him against the wall. Uh, I still think it's too soon for Britt. That's why I think they're going to go Nyla Rose first, sick, and then Britt Baker maybe by February at Revolution. Maybe. Uh, excuse me there. So, next week's card. We find out that we're going to have Hangman Page versus Wardlow. Kenny Omega versus Ray Phoenix. Tay Conti will be taking on Abaddon. Abaddon is ranked number three in the women's division. Uh, if you have not been watching AEW Dark, she's been on a tear. Abaddon's got the cool makeup. It is almost Halloween time. It'll be October 28th next week. They had to put her on the show or it would have been a travesty in my opinion. Um, so good to see Tay Conti and Abaddon getting some action. We also have Cody versus Orange Cassidy. We find out at this moment it will be a TNT Lumberjack match for the championship because the Dark Order threatened to interfere in that match. So I'm not mad at it. Lumberjack match, cool stipulation for me. Um, and what Sean said may come true. This is maybe how they set up Brody Lee versus Orange Cassidy. Give him his props if it happens next week. Um, town Hall for the inner circle on MJF with Tony Schiavone. Tony says he will not be singing if they try to force him to. But we don't know what's going to happen with this. Um, I think the storyline is really going to progress here. And I wonder if this is going to lead to a match or how they're going to possibly get mjf into this group it's going to be interesting for what's going to happen next week i think this is when we're going to find out what the big reveal is or they're going to set up to a match um then we go over what's going to be on full gear so right now we know for the aew world championship john moxley versus eddie kingston in an i quit match it's going to be brutal trust me um we also find out that matt hardy versus sammy guevara has been signed for full gear but it will be an elite deletion match. Please let this be a cinematic match. I think it's been a long time since we've had an ultimate deletion match. And I really think uh, from watching Matt Hardy's YouTube videos that the battlefield will be prepared. And Sammy Guevara and Matt Hardy are going to throw down and put on something very, very entertaining. Um, Darby Allen uh, will be challenging the, for the TNT Championship. Whoever wins the Lumberjack match next week. And that is what we have. And FTR will be taking on whoever wins the main event Fatal 4-Way that we have coming up here. And this Fatal 4-Way looks like it's going to be a doozy. Uh, in the 4-Way match, we have the following tag teams. We have Private Party versus the Young Bucks versus the Butcher and the Blade, who just got the bunny back if you were watching AEW Dark. The bunny has come home to the Butcher and Blade. And we also have... Uh, Alex Reynolds and John Silver in this as well. Uh, this Fatal 4-Way number one contender match had FTR out on commentary with the tag belts out there, uh, putting them on display. Love it. Um, I think FTR and their old school vision has been really good for AEW so far. Now, during all of this, we knew what we were going to get. Every team really got a chance to shine. I think that you showed that Private Party could hang in there. Uh, they had great chemistry with Silver and Reynolds once again, in my opinion. The Butcher and the Blade show that they are the power of the group and the Young Bucks were out there trying to finesse, especially Nick Jackson. He was going crazy in all of this. Um, I'm not even going to run through all of this because so much stuff was happening. So many saves were made. Uh, people diving to the floor, kicking partners in the face, super kicks out of nowhere. The Bucks getting super kicked by Private Party. Lots of things happen. Go back and check this out if you love those types of tag matches. But... In the end, what happened? The finish of the match came when you thought the Young Bucks were going to win. 
They set up a kind of uh, Meltzer spike pile driver. They ended up hitting it on uh, someone from Private Party and the Butcher and the Blade. They landed, but they ended up getting saved in the match. A little bit of more fighting. The brawls are going everywhere. People are continuing. They're stopping all the tags from happening with uh, Mark Quinn. Or, no, excuse me, Isaiah Cassidy is going for tags, but they're not letting him happen. They're pulling people off the apron. Isaiah Cassidy wants to make the tag so badly, but he can't because there's nobody there. And during all of this, they start to set up for the Meltzer driver. And it's kind of a flashback of what happened in the AEW tag title tournament round one. Nick's going for it and Mark Quinn grabs him by the leg. And Matt Jackson reverses it into a roll-up, though, opposite of what happened last time. So they tease the same finish, but then Matt reverses it. One, two, three. He tried to slip out, but it was too late. And it looks like the Young Bucks are going to be facing FTR in all of this. FTR says, boys, we got to go to the ring to congratulate the number one contenders. They go in with beer. The Young Bucks are straight edge. I don't believe they drink, do any of that stuff. They bust out the beers for them. Uh, they smack the beer cans out of their hands, which is seen as disrespect. And then all of a sudden, from the timekeeper area, somebody with a, a mask on gets up and hits the Young Bucks in the back with a chair, distracting the other uh, Young Buck. And a beatdown gets put down on the Bucks after that by FTR. And they end up picking up the, uh, I believe it was Matt, if I'm not mistaken, and hitting him with a double pile driver. And the person in the mask comes down and does the spike with them. Uh, it is then revealed that the person was Tully Blanchard a little bit after this. But the main focus of all of this was after they beat down the Bucks, they took Matt Jackson's leg and put it in a chair. And FTR stomped it and stomped the hearts out of Young Bucks fans. Uh, just terrible. Terrible. Uh... They are getting heat for this, and I like it. I really thought they did a good job here. Anybody who's a fan of the Bucks would be upset. Old school wrestling fans love it. I think they've really done a good job garnering interest for this match. Uh, I can't wait. It's been a long time coming, and I think this is one of the main reasons I'm very interested in seeing what happens with this pay-per-view. That and uh, Darby and Cody is another reason, and I will even put the tournament finals in there because I think we're going to get hangman versus kenny omega just a thought but really good stuff here um yeah tully was revealed ftr looked like the bad guys in the end of all this now let us see what is happening in the chat here hey zeus they probably don't want to come off ripping off halloween havoc uh i missed what jesus said right before this so cha-cha slide on up a little bit here uh nyla needs to do a promo next we can get this feud going with her and she at full gear i am with that jesus um unless they give it to abaddon maybe instead um let's see here bunny left and came back with no explanation either yeah rob i think they were trying to get something started with them and it still could lead to i've always said that this was going to lead to the butcher and blade versus the uh uh natural nightmares so I still think that's what we're going to get out of all of this. And I think they're going to be putting over the Butcher and the Blade. Uh, Sean said, I honestly would prefer Nyla gets the title shot next week and Baker gets the pay-per-view match. Or maybe they set up a triple threat since it was technically Nyla's body that busted Britt's knee after uh, Sheeta and Chris Statlander. Mm, good point. Good point. Uh, Malik, that's a long question again. Uh, we'll come back to it if we got time. Uh, Jesus said, just have Britt Baker and Nyla cut a promo with Sheeta next week. Uh, when something is bad, like Ali Angle, sometimes it's just best to forget and let it go and let this dumbass, like, just like this dumbass nightmare collective. Uh, Six said, Aleister Black, Ricochet, Sasha Banks, because I feel she can give the women's division a kick in the ass they need. Shinsuke Nakamura and Jeff Hardy, because I want to see the Hardy Boys versus the Young Bucks. Uh, A said, don't forget, SmackDown will be live this Friday night on FS1. Okay. All right. A lot of people are just putting in who they want to see go to AEW. I'm with Rob, man. They got to focus on their roster and do their things. Uh, don't forget, I'd rather watch the World Series than SmackDown. The only good thing on SmackDown is the Chief and Sami Zayn. 
kind of with Sean a little bit, a little bit. Uh, and Biggie, I like Biggie as well. Uh, they're doing great things. But guys, that's the end of the Dynamite review. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed a steak in a tournament tonight. Uh, tell me in how you like your steak cooked. What did you think of this AEW Dynamite show? Was it blue? Was it moo? Was it medium rare? Was it well done for you tonight? Was it tougher than a $2 steak, as JR would say? Let me know what you guys thought of the show tonight. What's going on, Connor? Late to the party, brother. We are just finishing up right now, but I'm glad to have you in here. Uh, show some love, show some love in the chat, but tell me what you guys thought of the show tonight, man. Uh, Jesus gives it three thumbs up, nine out of 10. Uh, Jocelyn said medium. Well, my girl, I like that. Uh, let's see. Sean Harrington said, oh yeah, forget the, uh, five. I just said, give Claudio to AEW. He's world caliber. Great. A said, uh, thumbs up six said not moo <laughs> and puts the cow emoji rockstar said nine out of ten uh jocelyn said 8.99999 put the repeating symbol over that bad boy hashtag math nerd i only care about my money though honestly uh i i respect it though a lot of people seem to enjoy the show tonight i'm gonna give this show a thumbs up as well but i'm gonna go with the same rating as jocelyn we're gonna go with a medium well for the steak uh, I might even, you know, I'm a big Philly cheesesteak fan. That's probably one of my favorite foods have done right. Philly cheesesteak, way to go. Um, I, I thought it was a good episode tonight. Very well built. They're going to have some big competition next week because NXT is putting on a Halloween Havoc show. We know that they're going to be bringing back Spin the Wheel, Make the Deal. Um, it, it's going to be on next week, all right? Um, NXT is one of WWE's better brands, and I'm interested to see what they do. Uh, this show was a medium rare porterhouse grade A steak tonight. Ooh, Sean, getting specific. I like it. That might be the best way to end the show, uh, as far as that goes. And Alex and uh, Alex Reynolds and John Silver is hella underrated. Jesus says big facts. Now, real quick, guys, for the rest of the week, here's what I have planned. Planned because Saturday anything can happen, but. The plan right now for Saturday is we are going to do an Impact Wrestling Bound for Glory review. If you are not on Twitter, use the hashtag fight, F-I-T-E-E-P-W. There's two E's back to back. So F-I-T-E-E-P-W. Use that hashtag. Put it in. You guys can find my Bound for Glory giveaway. We are doing one with fight. Uh, you guys can get the opportunity to watch it for free. So make sure you guys go to my Twitter handle down below, as you guys can see. And give us a retweet on that and like it. All the directions are in there. And tell us what match you're looking forward to. We are looking for people to win this. I want someone to enjoy Bound for Glory who's going to watch it. And we will be doing a review on the show afterwards. So big shout out to Fight for sponsoring that as well. I love it. I appreciate it. TB Scorpion, what's good, man? Uh, I appreciate you joining us and watching in the fun, man. Rob, I saw that uh, that Philly cheesesteak pasta from your homegirl really uh, looks good, actually. I saw it, but I'm trying to stay away from the pasta. Um, yeah. We've got a lot of good things coming up. So we'll have Impact Wrestling Bound for Glory on Saturday, a review for that. And then Sunday, Hell in a Cell. Dear God, don't let us have a review like last year. That show was so bad, but the numbers were phenomenal that came through so i'm not mad at it at all hopefully we get a better hell in the cell show than last year i'm looking forward to bailey versus sasha though we've got a lot of good things coming up so make sure you guys keep it locked with everything pro wrestling hit the like button if you haven't hit the subscribe button we can greatly appreciate all of you guys coming on in here each and every week joining me to have a conversation about pro wrestling so if you're into impact wrestling and wwe make sure you join me this weekend for the live reviews after the events go off air uh love to talk some pro wrestling with you guys thank you so much for joining us here at everything pro wrestling for myself i am out peace steak <laughs>
all clings to the sea Like you'll never get rid of your shadow Chris, you'll never get rid of me Let all the others fight and fuss Whatever happens We We're closer than pages that stick in a book. We're closer than ripples that play in a brook. So wherever you'll find him, you'll find me just the Closer than a recliner thrown at Hardy's forehead, guys, or me. We're closer than snakes are, they slide through the grass. We're closer than Cody is to a jackass. Not a soul can bust this team. We stick together like glue And when it's sleeping time That's when we rise We start to swing Swing to the sky Our clocks don't chime What a surprise They, they ring. ring A ding ding happy new year And now to repeat what I said and at the start You'll need a large crowbar to break us apart we're alone, but far from blue. Before we get finished, we'll make the town roar. We'll, we'll make all the late spots and then a few more. We wind up at dailies and then the fourth floor. Life is gonna be we while we. Say, Chris. What is it, Maxwell? Would you do me a favor? What do you want now? Would you mind taking it one more time? From the top? No, from the ending. Wonderful! And while we are swinging, to mention a few, we'll drop in a Chili's and Young Buck screw you. We'll beat up a Moxley, whatever we do. Yeah. Life is gonna be we while we Pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people, the best show that's here. So listen in, let the knowledge begin. The opinions, the lesson, yes, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many in this can understand. Uh, this the podcast to show you who I am. Uh, Conrad Cushman, the legend in the plans. Uh, please listen every day to the showcase. The opinions and knowledge that anyone can take, showing you. How it is done, proving I am number one, what a legend becomes. This is now my time to show you that I am here. Uh, this podcast just to make it loud and clear. Uh, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many who's here can understand. Uh, everything pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast here for the people, the best show that's here. So listen in, let the knowledge begin, the opinion and the lesson, yes. Everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people, the best show that's here. So listen in, let the knowledge begin, the opinions, the lesson, yes. <laughs> going on EPW Nation it's your boys from the Everything College Basketball Podcast Josh and Peyton here to remind you all that college basketball season is right around the corner yes we finally know it's right around the corner and Peyton there's only one place people should go for all the college basketball excitement well Josh the only place to find all college basketball hoops all the time is Everything College Basketball Everything College Basketball can be listened to on several podcast hosting sites like Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. And we can also be found on our Facebook group at 
facebook.com slash groups slash everything college basketball. Yes, make sure you are joining the group with a, a couple other hundred people and growing by the day as we march into year number three of the Everything College Basketball networking system. Now, let's get back to Conrad and everything pro wrestling. What's going on, Everything Pro Wrestling listeners? It's your boy, Jesse Carter, over at the Pro Wrestling Shoot Podcast, where we run special interviews with independent wrestlers, also former WWE and TNA stars. Pretty soon, we're going to be having the Matt Seidel episode drop, so you need to come and check that out, and you can find us over on anchor.fm slash the Pro Wrestling Shoot. Also, we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. The show also covers reviews from old and current events such as pay-per-views, AEW, WWE, whatever you're into nowadays, we will be covering reviews on that. We also have a little bit of music artists join us on the pro wrestling shoot. Also dive into belt collecting and hobbies of all kind. So yeah, as soon as you are finished with everything pro wrestling, why don't you come on over and check it out and tell us what you think. You can follow our Facebook page at the pro wrestling shoot. We are also on Twitter at Carter Inc. That is C-A-R-D-E-R. INC. Also Instagram at the Pro Wrestling Shoot. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitch. Coming soon, we will be doing live streams of the show on YouTube at the Pro Wrestling Shoot. And same with Twitch at the Pro Wrestling Shoot. All right, Conrad, back to you. And hope you all enjoy the rest of the episode from Everything Pro Wrestling. Are you looking for the newest and hottest in the world of pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 6,000 hours of the best events from over 150 of your favorite promotions from 20 different countries around the globe. Brands like Progress Wrestling, Evolve Wrestling, Combat Zone, Defy, PCW Ultra, PWX, Over the Top, Shine, and hundreds of others with fresh content added every day for only $5.99 per month. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv.